Hello everybody and welcome to another speedrun tutorial for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Last time when I did a speedrun for this game and beat it in under an hour, I mentioned that I was going to do another run for the same route, which is the sure ending of the game, except this time I was going to use the major skips that have been found, with the exception of a skip called Air Swim, if you've seen it. It effectively uses a glitch that allows you to swim to the end of the game a hell of a lot faster than you should be able to. Don't find the skip that exciting, so I did not want to do it, but I will be featuring every other skip. Uh, so, in the beginning of the game, you want to be jumping a lot and kicking to the ground, because jumping is faster than walking, and kicking to the ground is faster because it makes you fall faster. But, as you can see there, I fucked it up a lot, so don't, don't get cute, don't overthink it too much, and it'll be fine. Uh, that part's a little scary, because you can get shot, or you can get sliced, uh, so you gotta be a little, like, splitting it up, splitting hairs. Luckily, I almost, <laughs> I almost get sniped, but I do not, fortunately. Um, and then, I'm gonna kick my way over here, and I'm gonna try to do a jump into the window, and I don't get it. So, I grab my way in. Um, yeah, normally I get in that window at about 39 seconds, so I already lost 7 seconds just to my jump shenanigans right there in the beginning. And then that little bitch turns around. Every once in a while, he likes to turn around. Which, you wouldn't think would be much of an issue, it's like, just move around him, talk to him, whatever, but hey, you know what, this is a fucking speed run. And, what we do now in the speed run is we walk off this ledge, which apparently I struggle with as well, and then we move over twice, press circle to drop down, and then you can do a quick jump over here. The reason we do that is because you would normally have to equip the gourd there, um, and there's really no reason to be equipping items quite yet, because all you have at this point is the gourd and the homeward idol. And we're going to be equipping stuff very soon, so no point really in doing that. Make sure that you grab that Fistful of Ash. You want that because we are going to be using it later in the run for a boss. And then don't fuck up jumping there. Um, and then you just going to make the, make the big jump down and then big bang boom. You're going to whistle for Kuro. Uh, yeah, usually I make it to that door around like a minute 30, a minute like 20, 29 or something like that. So... Yeah, I have to mention the beginning of this run is super, super sloppy, but it's it's a good PB, man. It's a good PB. I'm, I'm very, 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 very happy with this run, but holy shit, the beginning of this run is a little sloppy. Anywho, we're going to walk up to Genichiro, and we are going to let him slice us up, because it's a speed run. Again, we're quick. That's why I don't heal. You just want him to be able to kill you in one hit, and then we are here. Skip over getting your prosthetic. Don't talk to the dude. No reason to, and then we are going to... Run to get a couple of items before we go to the Chained Ogre, who, for the most part, in the speedrun is not as scary as you might think. There is a nice little strategy you can use for him that... It takes skill. It doesn't, like, just kind of nullify and make him easy like <clears throat> most bosses in this fucking game. Um, so, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll showcase that in a second. But generally, follow my pathing. It's, it's the fastest, I promise you. And then we're going to pick up this Fistful Ash. Because, again, we're going to use Fistfuls of Ash later in the run, so you'll see me picking up a couple throughout. Uh, try to pan your camera up so you can get the grapple up to here. Then we're going to run straight forward, and we're going to jump down in a huge leap to grab the Gachi Sugar. We need it. Um, and then you're going to see me jump and go for this and actually get it. I don't uh, Jumping on that branch and getting to that branch up there is pretty hard. Sometimes I like to do a little kick on the side rocks over there to get up to that branch, but... Uh, you, you do you, man. You do what works for you. If you fall in the hole trying to get that branch, don't blame me, because it happens to me all the fucking time. Alright, you want to equip the Gourd, you want to equip the Gachi Sugar, the Fistful of Ash, and the Idol. I like to equip all at the same time, because I like to menu as little as possible, since pausing does not stop your timer. Um, and then, you're going to see, I could get a Stealth Death Blow right there, because that's what you normally fucking do, but, but, this motherfucker... <laughs> It's so often that it happens. I did, um, I, I, I did, I think, like, five runs in a row here, and, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, I was just not getting those stealth hits. If, if you notice that my screen's lagging a little bit, it's because I'm testing 1440p 60 frames recording, and I think my settings were a tiny bit too high, um, but... Fortunately, it doesn't happen too much over the course of the run. I, d I did notice it. It only lags at a couple parts, so I will get the recording figured out so you guys can have some sexy 2K footage. Anywho, really all the strategy for him here is hit a shit ton, and you just want to press circle while you're unlocked and zoom around him. Um, it is very easy to do if you use claw grip, but I can't use claw grip while fighting, so I kind of just zoom and then adjust my camera later. Um, the only other thing to really note for the ogre 
I mean, the, the unlock strats are pretty straightforward, is you want to make sure you stab his back for the death blow because stabbing his back is actually faster than stabbing him from the front. Uh, you get the items later when you stab him from the front and the animation for killing him from the front actually does take longer. But yeah, the general idea is unlock strats. You will stun him twice over the course of each health bar and then you just go ham with the R1s. Um, and it, it does a lot better job at moving you around him quickly because you don't just press circle and not move. You rotate your character as you do it. So you kind of get around behind him in one fell swoop and do like a 180. Pretty sick. Um, not much has changed about Snake. Snake's pretty much the same as the previous run that I did. We're not gonna we're not gonna hit him in the eye because it's a waste of time. Um, we're gonna go against the wall. You actually can move your control stick to kind of move a little bit faster, which I like. And if you do that, you'll actually be fast enough that you can run forward here around the palaquin, and then you can move to the left, grapple on this, grapple this, see the snake come for you and be scared as shit, and then you go up here and you're good. And now we are going to go to Giyubu, who we will also be featuring a new skip for, which is pretty exciting. Um, it's it's a cool skip, but yeah, there's there's an issue with this game right now in this any percent run where uh, I, I I should mention this you. <laughs> We're skipping a we're, we skip a lot. We, we skip a lot of stuff. Keep in mind this is essentially the any percent run. Uh, the sure ending is the faster of the two endings. So we, we, we skip a lot. So I like to grab this ash because I'm, I'm a little peach and I want uh, more ash for the strat we're gonna do later for the monk. Um, and then I run around Gyubu. If you don't grab that ash, you do have more time if you take a different path. But essentially, I'm gonna glaze over this really quick because it happens so fast, but Make sure you tilt your head down here. I like to line myself up right about there. And then I actually use my mouse and keyboard so that I don't tilt my controls at all and move because there's a consistent setup there for that. But essentially, you need to jump up to the tower, grab it with certain timing. It is something you just need to practice and try. Um, and then Gibu's gonna run off the cliff there. If you stand right there, it's great. It's, it's fucking great, he's dead. Um, but once you jump up, you, es you essentially want to jump off that tower that I jumped off of in midair, like after you've fallen off of the tower, it's a little weird to do. Um, it, it definitely is weird. I would search YouTube Giyubu skip to get an in-depth tutorial on that. QTT6 has a tutorial on that and it was very, very helpful. Uh, but yeah, and then he runs off the map, which is great. Now we're gonna do another skip called Bull Skip, which is bullshit because I hate this skip. Uh, it's really not as bad as I may be making it out to be, but I really fuck it up here. This is probably my biggest time loss in the run because I miss bull skip a ton, a ton, a ton, ton, ton. Yeah, see, I'm noticing more as I'm watching it. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of, there's a teeny, a teeny bit of chugging. I'm, I'm sorry for the chugging, um, but I will, I will get it sorted. Trust me, we, we aren't gonna chug forever. So essentially, what you're trying to do for bull skip, there's an invisible wall against this branch or like a, or like a collision. You want to jump against it, but you don't want to jump too late because if you do, you get a little baby jump and then you don't move anywhere. But if you jump too early, you won't be able to get the full distance around. So it's a little bit about timing. It's a little bit about rotating your character and camera. See, there's that baby jump. Um, yeah, it can be. It can be a little, a little, a little tough. Um, unfortunately, like I said, <laughs> I lose way more time than I would have liked to to this, but I do eventually get it. That's what it looks like when you get it. You don't want to push in too quickly because there is a second wall around the corner. I think that's what was stopping me all those times I fell off. I think I was pushing into the left too far. And that was pushing me so I didn't get the distance that I needed to get over here. But as you can see, you're able to just run around and then you can get to this idol and bing bang boom. Now we have it. We don't got to face the bull. Although at the rate I did the skip, facing the bull might have actually been faster. But if you get it on your first try, it's a fantastic time save. So it's totally worth get the idol and then we're gonna go here we are going to go grab this coin purse that is under this thing right here it's the only money we're gonna need the entire run because we're gonna go over to this guy here sell it and we're gonna buy one contact medicine which if you've seen my other speed run this is used for a skip called snake skip or as I call it swallow skip I like to stand in this spot right here if you notice the dogs kind of get caught on the pillar uh, they seem to never bite you in that spot so always just like do a 180 and kind of hug that dude and stay pretty close to him and the dog should not bother you which is really nice considering I already have pretty low health um, and then when we walk up here we're gonna use a gachi sugar I know a lot of you hate quit outs but there are a couple quit outs now in this run that we use to save some time um, because quit outs work in one of two ways in this game 
Quit outs either work in that if no enemies have detected you, you will spawn exactly where you quit out. Or, if enemies have detected you, you will spawn near the enemy that la or first detected you, I believe it is. But, the reason we do it is because those guys right there would normally detect you, but because you have the sugar on, and you jump from the spot that I did in the water, they don't detect you, you quit out, and when you spawn back in, the elevator will be there. So that's a... I think it's a 14 second time save, because that elevator actually does take a decent amount of time to come down. Four, 14 seconds may be... Maybe, maybe a little generous. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's that much, but it, it is a decent amount of time, and, and obviously at a speed run that we're beating in almost under 30 minutes, we are trying to save any little bit of time that we can. And we're gonna get on the elevator, and I'm actually gonna try to jump at the last minute to save, again, like two seconds. We're, we're shaving them where we can. Run over to the tapestry, because if you do, you will not have to listen to her dialogue, which you do not want, because you can't take the idol until her dialogue is cut off, so you just run in her face, and then take the idol, because we're going to need to teleport back to it later to puppeteer the kite dwarf. Going to run through Senpu again, and we are going to... I'm not 100% sure. Do I gra I don't. Okay, I didn't think so. I don't grab that Akko Sugar anymore, because I don't need it. I grabbed this last Ash here. We're, well, we're going to grab one more, actually, but... I grab another Ash there, and then we're gonna grab this one Akko's because I like to use it for Genichiro's third phase. You can use a Yasha Sugar, the stronger Red Tear Stone, cut your health in half sugar, but I don't like to because I think it's scary and I want to deflect the lightning. Um, I mean, I guess in theory it would work, but I'm a, I'm a little peach with a couple things in this route. I, I do actually do most of the full ball strats, but there's a couple things I do. Very, very few, but there's a couple things I do that aren't completely um, the fastest things you could possibly do, which I'll mention when I do them. I'm gonna go ahead and take this idol, because again, we are also gonna travel back to this. We will when we do snake skip. And now we're gonna go do monkey skip, which is a cool skip that I have not featured yet either. You do not want to grapple down there. Don't get your, uh, don't, don't get too speedy. Take your time. Uh, I like to grapple up here, because for some reason it seems to get me hit less by this dwarf. So I jump up there. I jump over him, run around the corner so he can't hit me with daggers, and then I'm gonna jump here, kick up here. And then sadly, we are skipping Roberto, the true crime of this run. Gonna jump from that, kick up here. We're gonna kick up on this little branch that you can see to the left right there. Use it to run into the tree, and we're gonna jump into the wall, and we're gonna slowly tilt to the left. If we tilt too fast to the left, then we will actually die um, and have to do the jump over again. But if we tilt slightly to the left, to the point where you see that last rock falling down, and then you see that little rock there, those little two points, you wanna push away from those points a little bit, to the right of them, and then you'll be able to grapple to these, and boom, we are in the monkey's arena. It's a really cool skip. I like this skip a lot. It's definitely fun to use. It's a little bit of a pain to learn, but once you get it, it's pretty easy, and it's really cool. So we're gonna use Gachi Sugar. We're gonna jump down, grapple here. That will let us kill our first monkey right behind. Normally, you need to ring the bell for this guy, but he doesn't never see you, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna jump up here. Normally, you can stealth kill this monkey, but for some reason, I like stumble in the stealth kill animation and don't get him, so stab him. This, the white monkey is always right here when you do the strategy um, after killing the red one, so you get him. And then we are going to go get the purple monkey, and this is fucking scary because in, the, in this, we don't, we don't get firecrackers anymore. We don't get them. We don't get them. And normally you jump down and, and stun that monkey with firecrackers, but this time I got there too fast. He jumped backward, and then I <laughs> got hit by a terror chimp, and then I fell. This is what you have to do. When you jump down, you want to hit him on the way as he's running away, um, and it'll stop him. So definitely a little bit scary, but I was so happy I managed to pull it off because I was like, uh, this run is pretty terrible, but I have a huge time save later, which is why, like, Right now, this run looks like, eh, you're not doing so great, Dmod. You're a minute behind your splits, man, but you'll see. You'll, you'll fucking see. Just you wait. All right, anyway, go get the Mortal Blade from this chick. In the Immortal Sevens run, you would not do this because it would fuck some shit up and make your game soft lock at a certain point, but we are not doing Immortal Severance yet. I will be doing that speed run after this one, and I'm going to do the All Beads and Memories route as well because that is the true, like, all bosses are as close as you can get to it in this game. And that'll be fun to do. Anyway, you're going to take the idol and you're going to upgrade your attack power. And then you are going to travel to Senpu Temple. Oh, I should also mention purchase spirit emblems, purchase spirit emblems, purchase spirit emblems, purchase spirit emblems. Because if you forget, you will not be able to puppeteer this dwarf. The reason I say it four times is because I've forgotten plenty of times. <laughs> it's bad. I equip contact medicine in the third slot. I equip puppeteer and I equip mortal draw. 
and then I'm gonna jump down typically you don't want to take that long fall you want to kind of like jump down on the rocks so you don't get stuck there for a second but whatever whatever man shit happens and then you uh, puppeteer the dwarf and then you idle to the last rusted and then from the last rusted we are gonna travel to Shigendo which is why we took that idol before and I always forget to travel to Shigendo, so Shigendo, Shigendo, Shigendo. Travel to fucking Shigendo. See, I was gonna run away for a second, but no. Travel to fucking Shigendo. And when I get to Shigendo, I'm gonna have the same problem. When I get here, I'm always gonna run toward where Roberto would be, but then I realize, oh shit, no wait, I need to turn around, because that's not the way we're going. Because we are going over to where the snake would be um, to do snake skip. So, jump down, grapple there. There are two options here. You could grapple to the left where you saw that grab, or you can run up to the tree and grapple from below it, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's all good. And then we're gonna grapple up here. I actually got hit by an arrow there, which I've never had happen before, so I'm gonna lose a little bit of time here because I need to heal. I wanna make sure my health is full here because there's a very specific setup for this. It's very, very, very particular, as you will see. Uh, because essentially what we're doing is we're going to jump twice, which will reduce 80% of our health, and we're using the contact medicine to get down the other 20, and we want to die from poison in midair. But we want to save as much time as we possibly can, make this as short as possible, because again, it's a speed run. So what we're doing is using the poison as early as possible. I'm immediately running off the edge there and making sure that I land on that because I don't want to lose any time to falling further. So I run and jump. Here I fall further than I mean to, but hey, that's the spot we're gonna be in a second. So immediately once you respawn, jump, and you should be at the right timing to die in midair. And hey, that's pretty good, man. This is my first death of the run. That's good times. If you're dying here for the first time, you know you've been doing well. See, but what it does is you spawn low enough and the snake spawns in. You wanna try to jump kick that wall and go out because you wanna make sure the snake is facing the bridge like that because that cues the game that you have passed the bridge, that the snake has broken the bridge, and that will make the snake appear below. It was really weird there. First, I didn't actually get the full jump kick out, but I Goomba'd the snake, I think? I don't know, I, you guys heard that, right? There's a little like, thunk sound that you get when you normally Goomba things. I think I Goomba'd the snake, dude. Well, now I'm stabbing him in the head, but we are not gonna take the second stab. Don't do it. Don't do it! Because it's a time loss. You would actually, uh, it would actually take longer for you to get to where you need to go if you did stab the snake, so don't do it. No, no. And then we're gonna get swallowed and go down to a little cave, which, weirdly, you actually spawn in this cave way before, um, the game screen goes away from black. You can actually move around in there, but I never do because I, I don't want to get lost. Um, and then we have another quit out strat here, which is going to use exactly what I mentioned before about aggroing enemies. I'm going to aggro this terrifying double sword monkey. Because if we do, he's the first enemy that we aggroed. And if we keep the aggro alive, then we will be able to quit out and be back where he was, which is where we want to be after we grab the idol for the guardian ape. So I'm going to jump here. This jump, I'm going to warn you, you see it right there. It is a pain in the ass. Sometimes that thing is just like, <laughs> I'm unavailable. <laughs> You're not going to be able to jump to me. <laughs> and it's really fucking annoying. Sometimes that grapple shit is just weird in Sekiro. I don't, I don't get it. And you're going to see here, I'm like, damn, dude. I'm like, this is, this is not the best run, but still, I want it. And luckily, as I'm about to fall and die, I actually get it from below. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but I'm okay with it. Um, take the grapples that I do here. You want to grapple up here specifically to aggro these monkeys because like I said You want to keep that aggro alive. We're gonna grapple up here jump from the hand and grapple there So we can get the idol for guardian ape who We are not going to face right now or uh, face at all as you'll see later But we don't face him now because we don't want to um, we don't want to deal with that shit right now And I actually think if you grab the flower at this point, I don't I don't know what happens I don't I don't think the game soft locks I don't think the game is soft. Actually, you know what? It would, because you have to kill Genichiro first, so show, show, shows what I know. Anyway, you quit out and see here. You are right behind where the monkey was, so now you can just go straight onto the cave. That saves about, I'd say, roughly 20, maybe 25 seconds, because normally you have to like fall, grapple, run through some of the poison, all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, run through here, hook, stay to the right, go to the snake, get that little ash for the last little safety ash that we want to get. Go run and jump around over here. And then we're gonna go to that hug wall right there. And we're gonna do a left jump as quickly as we can to get the fuck away from that snake. And then we're gonna jump to there. If you did get hit by the snake, he would likely hit you over near the monkey that you can puppeteer. It's a huge time loss to do it, but it is a uh, backup strat. 
Then we're gonna kick jump that wall here so we can get the divine confetti that we'll be using for a few bosses. And we're gonna jump up here and face the fucking scariest boss in the run. You might think I'm joking, but I'm really, I'm not joking. I fucking hate this boss. I'm so bad at this fucking boss. Um, uh, anyway, use the gachi sugar, hit these two trees, and then grapple to there. Sometimes if you do, uh, less grapples, somebody will spot you, so I just like to do those three. Get up in stealth blow, snake eyes, and then as long as you, um, have the gachi sugar, the guy across will not see you. Note that you can deflect the grabs. It is very key that you deflect the grabs. Here, I was trying to do some kind of strategy where I hit twice and then deflected him, but he really was not giving me favorable attacks to do so, so I tried like one hit and then wait to deflect, and I was like, holy shit, this is slow. You used to have Ichimanji double, and Ichimanji double kind of fucked this guy up, which was great, but um, now you just attack him, and it, 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 I hate this boss. I really do. But uh, fortunately, I'm not gonna die to him because he has NA aim, and uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Thank God I don't die to him. It's really not good. Like my 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 my, my fight there is very slow. But my previous fight, I didn't even die. My previous fight was just even slower because I'm terrible. I am terrible at that boss. No matter how much I practice it, I'm still ass. I hate that fucking boss. All right, anyway, um, grapple there, and we're just gonna continue on, and we're just gonna forget Snake Eyes ever existed, because we don't gotta fight, we don't gotta fight the second one, because we already skipped the gun for it, thank God. Anyway, grapple here, and then we're gonna do a jump out here, and we're gonna grapple to a thing that I'm gonna completely miss, because I don't jump, but thank God I Goomba that dude, because I'm pretty sure he would've killed me. And then, uh, we're gonna hit these two, and jump over the cock, and then we are going to head over to the other side, and jump down, where there is a Yasha Sugar which is very, very much needed for the run. Please do not forget it. And then we are going to jump over where Headless is, and we're gonna grab these Snap Seeds right here, which is the last key piece we need for the Monk Strat. And now we're gonna do a nice little skip that gets us to Miss Noble easy peasy. Just run straight forward, hook a right after you jump over that, head over to this tree, jump up here, kick jump against it, land on it, and boom. There you go, easy peasy, boom. I love that fall. I love that like run and jump in when you just like land on top of the Miss Noble. The meme noble, if you will, because sometimes that doesn't work. Like it works 90, 95% of the time, but every now and again you just like fall on top of it and it's just like, all right, are we really gonna do this? Are we really gonna take two of your health bars? Are we really gonna take two health bars of the hardest boss fight in the game? This is a speed run, man. All right, jump here to the right of the lamp and then we're gonna hook right here, right before we hit the ground. So just be mashing, mash, smash that fucking hook button, smash it, and uh, you'll be fine. You'll be good. And then we are going to just run through the Mibu Village. We're, we're not grabbing anything. I, I think in my previous run, I, I got five gourd seeds. Like I, I did a, I did a lot of, a lot of safety strategies. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a plane flying overhead. Also be wary of Bell Guy, because he can ring your fucking bell, dude. He can ring it hard, and if he does, it will kill you, so... Mm -hmm. uh, then, just get in the water, and swim, and then we're gonna go over and hook onto this. And that. And then we're gonna run over a monk. And what we're gonna need to do here for monk, since I already equipped Ash, we do not need to equip it. The only thing we need to do is equip Snap Seeds over Contact Medicine. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice just died there for a second. And then we are going to run as far to the left of the arena as we can, follow the pathing I do here, and you will not spawn the monk. Turn right, right here, and then right around those rocks, you wanna start using snap seeds. Use three of them. The reason we use them so early, as early as possible, is because the less the monk walks forward, the easier the strategy is. Throw ash, don't move far enough back that you throw him into that fucking thing like a dum-dum like I did. Fortunately, you only actually need five here, five ash if you have the right timing. But essentially what you're trying to do is back the monk up enough that you can jump against that wall. You gotta jump, kick back, a like you gotta jump backward, kick off the wall, and then you're able to get a stealth blow on the monk, which the monk was already easy enough, the monk already got cheesed hard enough, so at least we're not embarrassing it anymore. Like at least we're just killing it in stealth. It, it doesn't even know that it happens. Once the shinobi execution comes up, you can actually quit out at the door. Again, I know we all love quit outs. I, I really don't like quitting out, but you know, if it saves you the in-game time, uh, or the RTA no load time, which is basically the same thing, then hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. 
And fortunately, I do save some time here. I think this is my uh, my other gold split in this run. Actually, my, excuse, excuse me. It's not my only gold split in the run. You're about to see. You're about to, mmm, mmm. All right, this is the main Peach Strat that I do in this run. This actually loses you about 25 to 30 seconds, and it's getting Makiri Counter. Um, getting Makiri Counter is completely unnecessary, but I do it simply because I want it. Uh, because I don't I haven't learned how to just dodge the thrusts yet And I like I, I have so much muscle memory with using Makiri and to be honest It's also my favorite move in the game I like the stomp of the sword and I know I was talking about you know splitting hairs over saving two seconds and shit like that earlier But hey, man, you know what? It's my it's my speed run. I'm gonna speed run it how I want to You do need to use the attack power for the monk anyway, so it is actually a okay time to teleport back to the temple it's it still does cost you 25 seconds about I'd say but it's worth to me because it makes me happy and that's 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 what it's all about anyway we're gonna grapple here grapple here we're gonna jump over here grapple to this if you look up you should be able to hit this tower here and then you should be able to look to the left and we are Gucci be wary of the fucking woo guy dude I don't want to get Mm, yeah, mm, rah, yeah, I don't want that. Nope. 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 I've been hit by that guy way too many fucking times and uh, don't like it. Don't like it at all. I'm gonna grapple up here and then we're gonna do dojo skip so that we don't have to face the one dude. But first I'm gonna equip things as you see here divine confetti in then Akko and then Yash jump here kick against that. It's a really weird like run into the wall and then wide jump out, but you totally get used to it. I like to use the Yash before I jump up here because every once in a while when you grapple to this, you'll accidentally move straight into the boss fight and that's bad. And uh, we're gonna have to talk about this, guys. The, uh, mm, I'm gonna do a little, the, the, the little bit of cheese, a little bit of cheese. Okay, we're gonna jump against this wall, jump over his head as he double slashes and then three R1s and then use L1 really quick. If you didn't do that, he'd be able to hit you, but it actually resets your speed enough that you can attack him. So just uh, three R1s and then L1 and then three R1s and then L1 and you just uh, you just get them in the corner you just get them in the corner and you fuck them in the corner it's pretty nice uh, I'm not gonna lie cuz I'm sick of this dude's bullshit uh, I'm really tired of it I do love this boss don't get me wrong but in the speed run I'm like hey Genichiro you like like look we got an understanding here I'm just trying to get you fast don't do what I do there and turn too early wait until his health is all gone don't get impatient because now my health is low normally I would use an Akko sugar because you do have an time to use an Akko sugar before he hits you here but instead I heal because I want to be able to counter his lightning but this third phase is bleh. what the fuck happened there dude can someone explain that to me I jump straight up and somehow dodge his lightning I guess I'm a dodge god um, yeah so I completely missed that which would have decimated his health um, because we have the far more attack power than we should here but I'd like to take that last hit there, and then I like to Makiri, but um, we, we don't always get what we want, apparently. Uh, so I'm kind of panicking here, because I'm like, you know what? I, I may be a little bit behind, but my splits aren't bad, so this isn't the worst run. Um, but some somehow I managed to Goomba him there. I don't even know what the fuck... I, I don't even know what this fight is. I don't know. But fortunately, I win. And that's all that really matters. And somehow I managed to save time, which means my Genichiro split is actually kind of shitty. So... I could definitely save more time here uh, without a doubt 100% but it's a gold anyway like I said it's not my last gold split but you're you're about to see the true gold split you're about to see the true gold split here if you've noticed um, my split between revenge sign Bobo and King Kong is about six and a half minutes actually it's it's exactly six and a half minutes math hmm so we're gonna use our attack power here and then we're gonna go to the monkey and now you're gonna see me do something a little funky Little, little, little Funky Kong instead of King Kong. We are going to skip the monk, uh, the monkey entirely. We're, we're, that's what we're gonna do. And the reason I have so much time to save here is because this skip is hard as fuck, dude. All right, you're gonna run here. You're gonna move, kick, and move into the wall there. There's a little collision over the wall. Now I'm gonna make what I do here look really easy. If you follow my pathing, you'll be fine. But this thing is a tightrope walk that is full of holes, so you gotta know exactly where to go. It's a pain in the butt. Like right here, you gotta like whoop around that wall because it's like it's pretty close and you got to jump there because there's a hole there you just got to remember that you just got to remember that shit and then here if you don't if you walk too far to the left there and not in that specific spot you won't be able to jump into that wall there because there's a wall blocking you and you'll just fall into it fall into the abyss you fall into the abyss if you fail any part of this skip you will fall into the abyss like we did with the uh, folding screen monkeys for like 30 seconds but then you just die and then you have to do it all over again so it's a huge time loss 
The reason I quit out once I get to the spot that I did though is because the monkey likes to throw shit at me when I'm over here and it can hit you, so fuck that. When you get here, what you're trying to do, which you gotta be really careful because if you move even a hair too far to the left, you will fall off into the abyss. You wanna try to jump and move up to this little area here, jump around, um, and then we're just gonna jump, do two jumps there. Again, I would, if you wanna do this by any stretch of the mind, please Google, or, or I mean YouTube, Guardian Ape Skip, because it'll show it way better than I do, but essentially it allows us to go around and grab the flower. So obviously this is a massive fucking time save, not only because I did such a shitty job of doing this skip in the first place, the last time I had it in a run in my PB, but it's also because it saves way more time than actually fighting the ape. Again, this run does kind of skip a lot of the fucking bosses. It is a little bit disappointing, but again, I wanted to feature the major skips. There is a glitchless route for this category, um, and then there is an air swim category, which skips even more of the bosses. You you get to monk as fast as possible, and then you do another uh, out of bounds at monkey where you just fucking swim to the end of the game. Uh, which, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's a really interesting run, but not for me. I'm, I'm already on the line here. Honestly, like, I... This, these runs become about skipping as many things as you can to get to the end as fast as you can, which, hey, that's speedrunning. But for me, personally, I think I prefer the concept of doing most of the game's content as fast as possible, which is why I'm really excited to do the All Memories and All Beads run, which I will, of course, feature on the channel. Um, anyway, we're gonna YOLO straight up here. We're, we're not grabbing any idols. We're not doing any of that because this is a, this is a good time. I have a good time here. So we're gonna go straight on and we're gonna face Emma and Ishin and that's gonna be the end. The one downside of not killing Ape is we don't get his attack power, so these fights are gonna be slightly slower than they normally would be, which makes them slightly scarier because it increases the margin for error the longer you're alive. Or the longer they're alive, excuse me. Use the Yash Sugar, uh, be careful of Emma because sometimes she likes to do shit like that and shake it up and open with that stuff. Fighting Emma, we do not use Ichimanji anymore because we of course don't talk to Tengu to save time. Um, really what I do here in her fight is I do two hits and then I usually wait to see what she does. Sometimes I'll go for three because I've practiced enough, but if you notice there, Emma's fucking back there, dude. She's watching herself die. That's fucking creepy. That makes this all the more creepy. It makes it all, probably more savage. It fucking terrified me. I'm pretty sure it's because we don't talk to her after Genichiro, so she's still technically there by the game standard, but it's fucking terrifying. Um, so she's watching this happen from the afterlife, I guess, or maybe there's just twins. I don't fucking know. Anyway, use a divine confetti before the cutscene. I like to use Yash after, and then we're going to face Ishin. Um, Ishin, I wish I had a lot of tips for, but truly, Ishin is just you really do have to practice. I think I said this last time. You have to get good. Um, it it takes a long time. It takes a long time to get truly good at this fight and doing it at the HP level I am because obviously if he hits me with any attack, I'm gonna get one shot. I'm just gonna get straight up one shot. Now what you want to do here is use another Yash and you want to use Mortal Draw right away because we do not want him doing his Judgment Cut bullshit. Um, but yeah, this this is actually a really good Ishin fight. I, I had a really good one. Getting him in the corner here is scary, but I do manage to get behind him there. This attack is the scariest, the hyper armor, because you have to dodge through that, otherwise you're gonna die. Uh, I think you can deflect it too. But yeah, no, I manage a I manage a really good Ishin here. I manage a really, really good Ishin. I was fucking ecstatic. Ecstatic, ecstatic, ecstatic when I got this. I was I got this. Um, I had streamed this day, I had gotten this 3647 PB, and then I decided to practice Guardian Ape Skip since I lost so much time to it. Um, and then I was like, you know what, I'll try one run offline. And this was the one run I tried offline, so I was like, fuck yes, dude, because I was going, my original goal for this was sub 40, but then I was like, I see all the skips, like it's, it's possible to get a much lower time. Um, and I'm I'm pretty proud of this one. I, I think the world record for no air swim is like 27:45 or something like that. So it's definitely faster than mine. Like it's it's definitely done better than mine. Um, I probably on at my skill level, like in my splits, I probably have two minutes to save all the way up to Guardian Ape. I could probably save another like 20 seconds or so if I got the jumps faster at Guardian Ape. Um, so, so yeah, I could, I could probably, I would probably say I could save like two minutes and 30 seconds over the course of the run, maybe, maybe three, maybe three if you add in like Genichiro's fight being faster and everything, so, um, my sum of best is definitely accurate, like I think I could probably get my sum of best down to like 28 minutes or something like that, but 
I'm not gonna run sure anymore after this. I'm definitely, 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 definitely happy with this run. Um, I'm ecstatic with this. This is probably one of the better competitive times I've ever gotten in a speed run. So I'm satisfied with this. Uh, my plan now is to move on to Immortal Severance. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do Immortal Severance with these skips. Since I've practiced them so much, because Immortal Severance is essentially the same run, but when you get to the Owl, you instead betray the Owl, and you fight him, and then you fight the True Monk, you fight the Divine Dragon, and then you fight the Sword Saint. Um, so it's it's essentially the same run with a little bit of a different ending and a couple extra bosses, which we all love the Sword Saint, Sword Saint, and I love Divine Dragon as well, and I like the Owl too. So I'm excited to fight all of them. And True Corrupted Monk is fine. I I mean we're gonna we're gonna end up just doing two stealth blows and using firecrackers on it, but whatever. It's it's there. We all like Fountainhead at least. <laughs> But I'm excited to do it. I've been I've been enjoying speedrunning this game a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these speedrun tutorials. I know speedrunning isn't like the main focus of my channel or whatever, but it is my main focus on Twitch. So if you at all enjoy listening to my speedrun commentaries or anything like that, please come hang out with us on Twitch. Um, it's always a pleasure to see you guys there live and be able to talk with you, hang out with you. Um, but I know for some of you on YouTube, like you guys just don't like Twitch, and that's totally fine. That's why I like to post these things and um and get a little chance to just have some, have some one-on-one -on -one time, other than our scripted one-on-one -on -one time, because um, these are the only videos I make anymore that I don't actually script. I just talk unendingly, which hopefully you, you like. <laughs> I'm rambling at this point, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. Much love to you, and I will see you in the next video.